Hello and welcome to Spacecraft Communications 101 and more specifically how it applies to the DSN. Spacecraft Communications is very similar to terrestrial and the principles still apply. If you look at a simple digital two-way radio here, currently I'm using this in simplex mode which means that I'm talking and receiving on the same channel. If I wanted to listen and transmit at the same time then I would have to use two frequencies, one for transmit, one for receive. Spacecraft are exactly the same. We transmit at one frequency and receive at the other. That way we can send commands and receive telemetry and ranging at the same time. Now those two frequencies are separated by a fixed ratio. Whether it's S and X, it's fixed, and I'll put those on the screen. For K-band, we're a little bit more flexible, but as long as we know what ratio is being used, we can configure for it. Within the DSN, Doppler is huge. In fact, there'll be many supports where Doppler is the only product they want to see. So what is Doppler, and what are you looking for? Well, Doppler is, is an effect, aptly named the Doppler effect, where you see a change in waveform based on the velocity of an object. So as an object goes faster, the waveform changes. When it gets slower, it changes. When it's stationary in respect to the, the listener, then it's fixed. Now with spacecraft communications, we have also the, the added complexity of the Earth rotating. But that's a, a known variable, so we can quite easily take that into account. But what it does, it provides critical information for spacecraft navigation. So as a product, it's uh, incredibly important. So how do we collect Doppler? If you're receiving a, a one-way frequency from the spacecraft, essentially this is a spacecraft that's using its ultra-stable oscillator as its frequency reference. And it's transmitting that down to Earth. If we are looking at two-way, then the spacecraft is receiving an uplink, the carrier is locked on board the spacecraft, and it's feeding that receive frequency at our fixed ratio as a frequency reference to the transmitter to be transmitted back down to Earth. After saying how important Doppler is, there are times when the project don't want to see a downlink transition to coherent mode. Switching coherent will result in the Earth station dropping lock and having to wait for the sweep into the spacecraft to complete, a loss of downlink telemetry. The project configures the spacecraft two-way non-coherent, or twink enabled, to remain configured to the spacecraft ultra-stable oscillator, regardless of receiver lock, or twink disabled to automatically switch coherent on receiver lock. The spacecraft configuration is given in the support SOE. Three-way is simply a second station receiving the coherent signal from another uplinking station. When referring to this mode, it is described as three-way with the uplinking station. For instance, DSS-14 could be three-way with 43, if 43 was the uplinking station. Down on Earth, each station has a hydrogen maser as a timing standard. Now, although it's a timing standard, it's also a frequency reference as well. A very accurate frequency reference. So we've just talked about uplinking, the receiver locking on board the spacecraft, turning that frequency into a transmitter frequency reference and retransmitting it. So now we know that if we slowly up the frequency of the transmit, the downlink will move accordingly up and down. Okay, so what benefit does this have? Well, if we are transmitting the perfect waveform, ultra stable, it's being turned around on the spacecraft and being retransmitted back and being received and measured the difference between the receive and the transmit 
is Doppler. And as I said, we have a couple of variables. One of them is the velocity of the spacecraft in relation to the antenna, and the other is Earth rotation. Earth rotation is known. This is why it's critical when it comes to spacecraft occultating planets. The project want to know exactly what the velocity is in relation to Earth. They can use ranging as well as a supplementary means to, to get that more accurate. This is Chandrayaan, uh, a spacecraft orbiting the moon. It's just come out of occultation from around the moon and we've managed to lock one way. The instructions are to initiate an uplink as soon as we see the downlink. So what we're about to do now is start sweeping in. Initially, we enter a tune, the UPC Mac ASAP, that initiates a sweep on top of the tune. Everything has been slowed down about three times. I was a little bit too fast when I conducted the support. We have drive on, so we will be sweeping on top of the ramp into the spacecraft. At a certain point, the sweeping uplink will cross the receiver on the spacecraft's rest frequency. It will lock, it will switch coherent, and we will see a change in the downlink as far as frequency, and we'll drop lock. We've just dropped lock. Now we go about waiting for the tune to finish, and you'll see that on the UPM display. There we go. The remaining negative one is simply ramping Doppler out. We've halted the receivers, selected the two-way predicts. Hidden and acquire once the, the sweep is complete. And we're locking. A quick check is the carrier residual. It's pretty down close to zero. Uh, some projects are better at others at uh, predicting Doppler. And that residual that you see is simply the difference between the predicted and the actual. Theoretically, it should be zero if the predicts are perfect. So we've confirmed now that we are two-way. It looks good. So now we can go about applying our modulation. The beauty of this spacecraft is, there we go, command enabled. The beauty of this spacecraft is that it only has a one second RTLT being cl so close. Well, hopefully so uh, you now have a better understanding of one way, two way, three way, and also seeing how it applies to the workstation, what you'd be looking at. If you require any other information, talk to your mentor or your trainer or go through the reference material.